something that I've been working on, which is more like a prototype than actually a result that I want to, to achieve. So let's say I'm already finished for what I wanted to do. Here we have Godot, as everyone is aware, and I'm pretty sure everyone should also know about this asset lib tab where you can find plugins from other people. Most, if not all of these plugins, if you click here, you can see from where they are. For example, here, if you click view files, you will probably get redirected to GitHub. However, did you know that we can actually change from where these plugins come from? I've created a prototype or starting project, so to speak, where I can host my own plugins. So I have it ready. And as you can see, I have like some dummy plugins over here. I just copy pasted from the original one just to have some things. And of course, not just localhost, but you can point this plugin to a website of your choosing. If you come here to edit tour, edit settings and asset library, you can set up other repository URLs just as I have done so. So I just come here, click and string in both and just give it a, a name and some other URL like this. I've also recreated what the API is expected to be. As you can see here in my local host, I have like a lot of APIs set up and the main ones for Godot to work are these three. So I have the configure asset and asset with an ID to get all and one only like to get one specific asset. The code is set up to work well with the existing Godot implementation of the asset lib. So for example, if I come here to configure and just try it out, I can see what are the categories available. And these categories appear over here. So as you can see, I have these test one and string weird categories, which I can specify within my backend. Similarly, I can uh, cancel and go to get all assets. These are the filters available through the Godot code. As you can see, for example, Godot version, I can specify what the Godot version here is. Over here, I actually don't do this. The Godot core automatically only shows you the plugins available for your own version. But for example, I have this filter. As you can see here, it's working, though it is using capital and lowercase, which is something that can change in code if you wish. But the same thing happens here. If I just search for everything, I'll get everything. As you can see, all three. And I can change the filter to say mag, same thing that I typed before, and only magic of Oxo importer will appear. This custom asset lib is open for everyone in the case of these three APIs, but everything else is actually hidden behind authentication. So to utilize the authentication procedure, you come here to authorize and type in admin and password. By default, you can change this when you create your own server. And now with the authentication procedure done, I can actually use the other API. For example, in this one, I can query all the information from the assets from within the system using generic filter range sort and fields, which you can read more in the documentation and also in the code. And all of these have create, edit, and delete for super users only, which means you need a login and password to change and you are able to change all of the plugins at once. Uh, I haven't implemented user-based authentication, but I'm, I'm happy to receive pull requests if people want that too. And one of the main advantages of having this custom implementation of the asset lib is because now I can actually define exactly what will return from whatever filter I put. I can add more uh, categories from this configure portion and also through my code, what I did was create a front end over here, just set up a username and password through the code as well. As you can see here, I have a react based admin panel for all the assets I have. I can see the categories. I can change one of them. For example, let's change this test one to test 12. Save. Now it's test 12. If I go back to Godot, this won't change unless I switch over here. So I need to just 
refresh it. Now test 12. And same thing goes for the assets themselves. If I change the name here for trackball camera 2 to something else, it will also appear over there. This is a very simplistic implementation, but I wanted to share with you that this is possible first and foremost, and also to encourage any of you that want to actually build their own asset lib to extend over the existing functionality of Godot's one. So maybe with added ratings, added other things that can, can appear here by default, other categories, maybe you have an official category from the official godoangel.org, but also custom ones because you are in a company or something like that. So many, many ideas can come from having a custom asset lib URL as I'm showing. Now I'll dive a little bit into the code itself, which I will be very quick. For more information, read the readme files in the documentation, which is linked below. All the code you're seeing is also linked below through GitHub. So feel free to try it out or test it out for your own, if you so wish to. The backend is implemented using Python and more specifically, Fast API. From the main file, which is this one, you can just see exactly how I set up the, the backend paths. In API version one, you can see the base routers and the inner routers are configured as such. There is the user router, which handles logging. There is these two routers, which are the, the expected APIs for Godot itself. So the assets and the configure. And these two routers focuses on the admin panel for React admin. I'm using CSV files in local storage. You can see categories and assets over here. Uh, they simply have the, the data that you saw before. If you edit any of the assets or categories, as you can see, we already did, it's actually up updating the file. But the system also supports other SQL databases, such as MySQL, Postgres, or many others, and also MongoDB if you are so inclined to use. Same thing is valid for users. In this case, I'm using a very simple test user here, but if you come to core auth, you can see how to actually define a database through URL being MongoDB, a relational database, or in the case of this example, I'm just using these test username and password as a dictionary. The backend code uses this other library that I also built called FastAPI CRUD ORM connector, mostly to facilitate the connections to SQL Alchemy, Pandas, and other databases as well, such as MongoDB, for example. This library is certainly not ready for production use yet. It's mostly for my research work, but feel free to use if it's useful for you. Now for that front end that you saw, I'm using NPM and Yarn, Yarn more specifically. Within it, I have implemented a React-based website using React Admin as a panel for easily show those things that you saw. So it basically uses the libraries React, React Admin, and Material UI, if you know what I'm talking about for front-end development. If you don't, feel free to just use as is. And for those curious, the authentication is stored in local storage, like this, by using an encrypted version of the token. This token is encrypted from the backend, so it's very safe to use. If you update your secret key, and the secret key can be found in dot and secret key. So definitely update this if you plan to open your server to the internet. And I hope that with the possibility of integrating a custom asset lib will entice, for example, people with plugins such as this one, CD plug, which is a package management through command line repository. People like the Godot Marketplace, which is also a custom marketplace for Godot, but it's not integrated directly with the engine. Or even say, gotten.io or itch.io, 
other systems like that that can integrate directly with the asset lib in Google in a way that, for example, there could be custom plugins for different use cases or even favorites. So you can store your own favorites so that all your projects just have them all ready to go when you want. So I hope this has inspired some of you to try both the code out, which is linked in the description or in the, in the comments, one of the two, and maybe inspired you also to build your own asset lib. This will be all for now. Thank you for watching and see you next time.